What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart. I'm back. <sighs> Always feels good. I did think the last video was going to be my last video of this year, but yeah, seems like it isn't. You know, my Christmas holidays this is my last day that I'm actually going to be in my house, so I'm just enjoying it. About to watch, um, what's that movie? Bright on Netflix, and I am going to play some Monster Hunter. Right before I have to go see family and just do all the Christmas thing or whatever. So yeah, I thought I would do like um, my last video where... Oh, this might be my last video. I might do a video before the end of the year. Um, but yeah, this one I want to talk about Star Wars. I mean, to be honest, I did want to talk about it. But I've been talking to, you know, a lot of my friends. And I've been having like a lot of big discussions, interesting discussions about Star Wars. So I thought to myself, I might as well. I might as well just do... A Star Wars review just throw it out there and stuff like that so yeah man let me just talk about Star Wars how I felt about Star Wars you know and I'm not gonna say I'm massively into Star Wars but I do like my Star Wars you know I like I like the Empire I like the Stormtroopers I like the Jedi I like the epic adventure I like the space battles I like the lightsabers I like the combat I love the 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 intrigue, I like all that kind of stuff about the, the um, Star Wars. So, um, as I say, I'm not a massive, massive Star Wars addict, right? But I do love me some Star Wars, right? So, uh, let's talk about the movie and say this is going to have spoilers from the outset. Yeah, so, yeah, let's just get into it. So, what I like about this Star Wars, about this Star Wars movie, as a movie, it was really, really good. It was an excellent, fantastic movie. I loved it. I loved the movie. I, I personally enjoyed it. What did I think of it as a Star Wars movie? Not very good. It wasn't a very good Star Wars movie. You know, I could give you some bullet points. For example, what is Finn? I didn't even understand what Finn was in this movie. Is he an adventurer? Is he set out on his own to take down the Empire and maybe free some of the stormtroopers? Um, what is he? What is Finn? What is his goal? Is he an adventurer? Is he good with swords? Is he good at fighting with his um, with the baton thing? Does he use guns? Is he good at piloting a ship? Is he innovative? What is Finn? What is he? I don't understand what he is. Let's go on to Ray. What is Ray? Who is she? What is her place in all of this? I mean, okay, so she's the, basically the counterpart to Kayla Ren. And that is basically all we know. Because now they blatantly come out and said to us, nope. She's not Luke Skywalker's daughter. She's just a daughter of some pieces of shit that sold her off for beer money. Which I actually like that more than her being a Skywalker. I actually like that more. Let me explain why I like that more. There's a reason why I like that more. So... The reason I like that idea more is because essentially, what are they saying? They are saying, fuck being part of a royal family, fuck being part of being a, of a special bloodline that you um, are you are inherent to the power of the force, right? You can be a normal person. And as long as you fight for something, you believe in something and you have hope. You can be something in this world. You can be a massive impact in this world if you believe. If you have hope and just... Anyone can do it. Anyone can make a difference. And I like that more than her being a Skywalker and then having all that incredible amount of power and potential. So they say she is very, very connected to the Force, right? Which I do like, but the fact is, from the beginning, they have said to us and shown to us and raised us on the, it's basically propaganda, that she is Luke Skywalker's daughter. She's Luke Skywalker's daughter.
they've said it in like hush whispers in silence and awe in the first movie. What's the first movie called? I forget. The Force Awakens, right? So essentially, like look at this movie. This movie had epic scale, man. This movie just had scale and just incredible potential. I mean, I actually like this better than I like this movie. And this movie was really, really good. But the reason I like this more is because not only was this a Star Wars movie, but it was also an incredible movie in itself. That's why I like this movie better. I like this this new Star Wars, The Last Jedi. I like it as a movie. Incredible movie, nine out of 10. But as a Star Wars movie, it's a 7 out of 10 and it barely scratches a 7 you know I mean when you look at the elements it's like everything is all basically based off a of lie it's all they've turned it around the, the, the movie stylistically visually is incredible the colours the the, the 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 vivid colours um, that planet where it had, was, was salt it was like a salt um surface with kind of like red underneath it or whatever um all that kind of stuff it was the the, the way the troopers looked you know the the starship flighter troopers the storm troopers the, the the fire troopers there were so many different types of the um imperial guard the imperial troopers the imperial storm troopers i i like storm troopers you know unless you didn't notice right they, they just, I don't know, but they just kind of switched so many things and I feel like they're so desperate to change the order of things that they just said, you know what, all these characters gotta go, all the old characters, Luke Skywalker, gone, um, Han Solo, gone, the only person that they kept was Leia. So I don't understand that decision. I really don't understand the decision. It doesn't make any sense to me. You know, the lady's gone. She's dead now. Leave her alone. Leave her in peace. You know what I mean? You have to end her character in a very good way. And then leave her at peace. But, in, but basically, just in order to put a spanner in the works. Or just to throw people off the scent. They keep Leia and they get rid of Luke. And how they get rid of Luke? They say he sent his astral project... Astral... Um, astral projection version of himself across the galaxy in order to buy the rebels time to escape in a millennium falcon okay so i get it but that killed luke the fact that he sent an astral an astral version of himself to the battlefield that couldn't even physically interact. That is what killed him and made him fade into the force. So that irritates me in so many ways. I get it. I actually do get it. But just because I get it doesn't mean I like it. Right? So what does Luke's death do? It basically it's going to basically buff Ray. It's gonna make Ray more powerful because now. Uh, Luke's essence has gone into the force right and maybe he was go he's going to distribute that to basically the future generation of freedom fighters right and Rey because in the end you even see that kid that has the ring the, the ring that um, Rose gave to kids I didn't even know if she gave it to him but he said we're part of the rebels and then the kid helped them with those animals, those race horses or whatever, right? And then the kid displayed power of the force once they were telling the legend of Luke of what he did against the Empire. But then even Luke didn't do anything against the Empire. He basically slowed them down. I mean, they teased it. They teased Luke versus the, the, the Empire fleet. What would have been sick is if that Luke had filled that astral projection version of himself with the force because that version of him didn't have the force it didn't have the force him and Kylo Ren didn't really clash swords he didn't deflect nothing 
It was awesome though when they when Calibre was like have every single cannon, gun, laser beam, everything aimed at that man. And every well, my mark, every single warship, gunfighter, bazooka, laser cannon, gun, everything in this battalion will fire on my mark. And then he just unleashed the entire payload. And then Luke just, just come out the smoke was like, like My head came off, literally, my head spun around like the kid in the exorcist, yeah, and I was like going nuts. But I was conflicted and, and confused because in that same my brain was trying to process the fact that Luke looked young and he had the sword. So I could have actually enjoyed the moment because my brain was just going, but wait a second, didn't Ray just have, I don't understand what's happening right now. Didn't Ray um, have that sword and didn't just Kylo Ren use that sword to kill um, Snook and I don't understand what's happening and I don't, I, I don't know, whatever. How did Luke get there? Oh yeah, yeah. He did have a ship, he does have a ship on his planet that they actually did show to us, right? So he could have got on the ship and flown there. But why does he look so young? Why would he have changed his appearance? You know, what's happening? So I just said, fuck it, just enjoy the movie. I couldn't enjoy the movie because of my brain. Everything that I was trying to think of it was just being counter thought because I was like, he couldn't have gotten the ship because, you know, he didn't have time for it. Well, how would he have fixed it? Would he have used his force power to make it fly? Uh, how, why would he change his hair? How did he get the sword back? Um, how did he get his way into the rebel base? How did he know where they were? Um, my brain was just going at a million miles per hour. I didn't really know what was going on. But I said to myself, but wait a second, Ray managed to get there? If Ray managed to get there, then Luke should, um, wouldn't be, wouldn't, can't be that much of a feat for, for Luke to be able to get there. But stop. Enjoy the movie. By that time, the scene was over, and Luke had died, faded into the Force, just like, um, uh, just like Yoda happened to Yoda, and now it happened to Luke, right? Um, so, as I said, I do like the idea of what they did to give hope to the, gener the, the future generations. It was more of a philosophical story than anything else, right? Uh, which was pretty cool. Which was pretty cool that it was like a kind of like a philosoph philosophical story. But I wanted more action, man. I wanted more action. I wanted more crazy. I wanted more epic proportions of adventure, which I didn't get. Ray is supposed to be the adventure side of things. And she wasn't that. She was all the time. She was stuck on the planet with Luke. Doing nothing. Doing fuck all. What training did she receive? She didn't receive any training, man. No training. Look at the training that Yoda gave to Luke. I want training like that. She didn't get none of that training. None of that. She didn't do anything on that planet. Nothing. Nothing. Or the only thing that she achieved was that planet. Basically, there was a, a dimension or a portal to a powerful side of the dark side, right? And Ray didn't even try to resist it. But it didn't even corrupt her or do anything to her. Even though she jumped into it and... Uh, I don't know. And then Luke, for everything that Luke is, yeah? The thing that made him almost succumb to the dark side and do something worse than anything he's ever done was basically because Kylo Ren, this, he saw Kylo Ren's future and what he was going to do in the world and he said it only for a split second he wanted to kill him but you must have come out of your hut picked up your sword and stood over his body and so that that basically the thought of you killing him must have lasted longer than a split second bro if you came out of your hut and had your lightsaber stand over his body with the intention to kill him yeah it might, that, the thought must have occurred to you for more, longer than a second bro so you know what I mean? So that's when he said them. He, he saw in the eyes. He basically in the eyes. It, it was it, when he looked in Kylo Ren's eyes when Kylo Ren was a kid. 
he saw the eyes of a child who's been failed by his master, right? And I get that, I get that and everything like that, but the fact that that is what's forced him into seclusion, that was the big story of everything, of what, what happened with Luke. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. It's just... It's such a weird thing, man. Like, I, as I said, I do like the movie, but there were certain things that just bugged me. And I just couldn't get over how useless certain events were. Like, let's say, for example, you look at... Um, what is it called again? Finn's Adventure with Rose, right? And everyone loves Rose. I don't see... I don't get it. I don't get it. What, what's so fantastic about Rose? I, don't, I really didn't get why she's so fantastic. Right? She was a cool character. Very, very cool new character. But I don't understand why everyone's going nuts about her. Maybe someone needs to explain it to me. Right? Um, but their, their adventure was to go to a planet to get a cold cracker. Right? So, I, I really don't understand it. I really don't understand. Go to a casino planet. Um, and that thing was shit. And the world, it basically shows like the world is all glitz and glamour. But it's not actually glitz and glamour. Because the glitz and com glamour comes at the expense of poverty. And treating the people that really built it up like shit. Right? And kids and all this kind of stuff. Right? So I do understand that. But the fact that this was Finn's adventure, and he's basically a comedy, a jolting, a jolting. And then you, you saw the, the Empire um, pretty much at its full force, and they were all standing in order, and then they brought Rose and Finn in. And then they were dwarfing about executing them for like 20 bloody minutes. And then Captain Phantasma came, who was absolute garbage. Looks incredible. The idea of the character is fantastic, but she does nothing. She's just like that character Boba Fett or Django Fett or whatever. Looks absolutely amazing. Um, uh, the history or story of the character or what their place is is amazing but they don't actually do anything except die like a little bitch and that's basically Captain Phantasma again she died again bodied even though the the battle with Finn was kind of cool right very stylistic it was style and no substance Style and no substance, that battle with Finn. It's visually incredible, but actually nothing happened. Because you can't actually do... You know what, is Finn good at fighting? Is he actually a good fighter? Because I don't know. I don't know. He hasn't displayed any of that. He hasn't displayed any of that. No training. So I don't understand what he's good at doing. I don't understand except him being resilient and the fact that he would sacrifice himself for Rey. To do what's the greater good. I don't know, I'm so confused here. The same thing like the, the rebel forces, when the rebels were escaping from the ship and there were 30 escape pods, it took them like 50 minutes, an entire battalion fleet, almost 50 minutes to destroy seven escape pods that didn't have shields or didn't have nothing. They knew that they were escaping because they got betrayed by the um, Benicio de Toro's character, right? And then what happened? It took them 50 minutes and they could only draw like about 7 ships or whatever and the rest of them still managed to escape. So I'm thinking to myself, I don't understand this. I don't understand what's happening. How is it taking an entire fleet so long to, dest to destroy a couple ships over there? You're firing at them and then you can't even catch up to them. What also kills it, they couldn't even catch up to them. Okay. I mean, I say all this, I say, what did I like about the movie? The fact that it's a Star Wars movie. The fact that it was actually, an, it, it, was, it was a good movie. It was, it had, it did have adventure. It did have the combat with Kylo Ren and Rey combating together. 
the weird bit of connection that they had, which I couldn't understand what it was. And then you find out that Schnook was creating like a mental connection between them to the point where they actually did manage to connect as well from across the galaxy to a point where they were actually physically there together. And who was powering that? What was that all Schnook's ability? Or was that Ray, Schnook? and Kylo Ren, their power mixing together and then making that bond. But then, did, wouldn't they have sensed Schnook's ability to do that? So I don't know, I don't know. And the fact that that same thing caused Ray, um, so caused Luke to die. And it was real, it was real, it was real. There was an element of it that actually physically affected them that connection there was something that physically connected them right so the fact that Luke died with something of less ability it was kind of strange to me right because it's not like he was there for like an hour using his force projection right I mean if he if he did fill that astral plane body version of himself with force power Shouldn't he have he been able to do something to Kylo Ren, like move him or, you know, do some type of physical interaction, right? But then the fact that Kylo Ren couldn't detect that that was an actual astral plane version, maybe it did have a lot of force power and presence inside it. I don't know. So, as I say, again, there's a lot of things in it that just conflict and just confuse me, right? And I just don't even, I can't even get over it, you know? Like, when you looked at the first movie, it was so organic when you were on the planets, when you were in different terrains, where there was different alien races, you felt part of a, part of a bigger world. Whereas this one, all 90% of the interaction was with humans, there were nothing but human beings. There was, what, the caretakers on Luke's planet, the, the crystal fox, and the pogs. And that was pretty much it when it comes to alien races. There were no other type of races in the movie. There were no type of alien. There were no other cultures. You could say they didn't have time for that. This is the, this is the Star Wars world universe. And it's the longest Star Wars movie. And there's no way you can say you didn't have time to do it. Or because we're trying to address a big story. So you're going to tell me that the Force Awakens. Didn't have a massive overarching story. Because the, I'll tell you what. The story in the first movie felt much more complex than this movie. This movie. If I could say this movie had anything more than story. So basically, yeah, the Last Jedi and The Force Awakens, the biggest thing that they have in difference is stylization. The style has changed and the it's like the law has changed, right? Because they've literally got rid of the old guard. The only the only person that's still there is Leia. They got rid of Schnook. Over even though Schnook is like, you know, he's they did they, they bring him this new he's a new character right but he's part of an old order in terms of he's a hierarchy he's a higher ranking person of the old generation right just with them um, vader um palpadine leia luke they want to create a new a new generation ray finn kayla ren that's what they want to do going forward but then there is no foundation from this. The only foundation that they've put onto this is the new generation. They have hope. And that's the long game, by the way. That is the super long game. As in, Star Wars came out before any of us were born. Right? When they first started Star Wars, the first Star Wars with Luke, Han, and Finn, I wasn't alive yet. You guys weren't alive yet. You Most of you weren't even born yet. Right? And now they're starting this one in our generation cycle. So potentially, the next Star Wars movie, who knows when that will be? What, 20 years? 30 years? 
will we still even be here? You know, anything can happen in life. You know, so that is that for me. I'm thinking that is the long game, like the super long game. When they say like the kid that picked up the broomstick, that's probably going to be the next hero of the next generation. You know, um, so I just don't know. I don't know. It's just it's it was, it's a weird one. As I say, visually the film looked amazing. Visually, I can't argue with the way the movie looked. Visually looked good. Um, the adventure was still very good. Right, it's just there was the things irked me about it, like the the humor. The humor was stupid, right? Like there were so many st stupid comedic bits. There wasn't enough um, alien cultures um, and interactions and richness of the universe in that movie. I wasn't bowled over by Ray learning from Luke. You know, um, Finn. His adventure was essentially him. Waking up and then going to a casino planet to get somebody to do something for him, which was an important job, but then they didn't even get, they didn't even do that anyway. So it was a failed mission, right? Oh, I really don't know, man. I really don't know. Um, but it was still, an, it was still a good movie, even though despite everything that I'm saying. I still enjoyed it as a movie. Everything that I'm critiquing it on is it being a Star Wars movie connected to the original Star Wars and the first Star Wars. Because look, I'll be honest with you, Force Awakens is a better movie in my opinion. In my... To me. To me. First movie was a better movie. It just felt more, you know, I knew where all the characters were going. This movie, I don't know where the characters are going. I don't, I really don't. I mean, as I say, the three characters of Rey, Finn, and Kylo Ren were amazing because their characterizations were so spot on they are so consistent it's incredible it's incredible how consistent they are there's no character assassination in this whole movie with those three characters they're basically the same i recognize them from the big first movie to this movie i recognize them i recognize them the only thing that i don't recognize is where they're going their direction it's almost like they're they're their stories have changed, but their personalities are, remain intact. And the most fa what kills it, the most fascinating character is actually Kylo Ren. That character is easily, by far, the most fascinating character of all three of those characters. It should, it sh I mean, they all should be really fascinating. If you think about it, they all should be really fascinating. Rey, Finn, and Kylo, but Kylo is just killing it. As as a, you don't know where he is, what he's thinking, what he's doing, you don't understand him. But he's so so fascinating and interesting, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, as I say, if I was to rate Star Wars: Last Jedi as a Star Wars movie, I'd give it a seven. If I was to rate it as a movie in itself, as what I really enjoyed it as, I'll give it a nine. You know, and I've said what I didn't like about the movie. Just didn't like the lack of... There was such a, a, a lack of just... The universe. The galaxy. The exploration of different planets. And seeing different alien races and interactions. Where was it? You killed off Luke. You teased us with a potential Luke versus the entire Empire. Right? incredible visuals that will last lost forever and then you kill him off like that Luke Skywalker you kill him off like that like I don't know what to say I don't know what to say you just kill that character off it's 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 amazing to me um and I've got to be honest as well I think about that movie and Luke Skywalker 
Not only did I not recognize him, but I actually didn't like him in this movie. Like, there wasn't one thing in this entire movie that I liked about Luke Skywalker. Not one thing. And I can't say that about Leia, because I actually liked Leia. And I liked Han Solo in the first movie. If anything, it's strange because I like Kylo Ren more than I like Luke Skywalker in this movie. It's so odd. It's so odd. I mean, the thing that I, the only thing I can say I really did like about Luke was when he was talking with Leia. That was like one of the best things in the whole movie, right? And even then, he wasn't even really there. And even then, I was confused because of his appearance and everything. So I couldn't really focus on that scene as much as I would have liked to. So, yeah. That's really all I want to really say about the Star Wars, you know. They just needed to sort it out. And they can't sort it out because the movie's done already, right? Um, and there's things that we're always going to call dumb, right? We're always going to call um, the way Luke just died like that. That was the extent of his power. Died. Done. You know, an entire fleet couldn't destroy 30 um, life pods, even though they were literally there, right? That you couldn't kill them, took an entire battalion um, of the Empire fleet, like, 40 minutes, 40 to 50 minutes to shoot down seven ships, they couldn't even catch up to them, you know? Um, where were all the alien races in the movie? You know, what was Finn's adventure going to a casino planet with um, Rose? And basically doing nothing. Getting bodied. He had, he had no, he could do nothing. Finn could do nothing to the Empire. He didn't even try to put up a fight or, or nothing. Nothing. There was no epic adventure, no scale. The best thing in that thing was essentially Poe. Versus um, a, a, um, a star, the, the giant starship. I can't remember what it's called, right? Um, a star killer or something like that. No, not star killer. Um, one of the Empire um, mega warships, and he was taking down all the guns on his own. On his own was the was the best fight in the whole thing, as in terms of a a, a ship a, a space battle. With one guy against a, against a giant ship. That was it. I mean. Man. You look at Rogue One. And then you look at The Force Awakens. In terms of action and spectacle. And in terms of spectacle. This movie didn't really have spectacle. It didn't really have spectacle. It had. A lot of philosophies. Incomplete philosophies. And. Um, legacy. It basically gave the next generation, and um, it built it up for the next generation, but it didn't give the next generation a foundation. Well, it kind of did give it a foundation, but it didn't give it a boost. You know, so it's saying that kid there that works in the stables, he's got the force power. He is um, inspired by the legacy of Luke Skywalker and the Rebels. Hopefully, he will be the next powerful Jedi. You know, so I don't know. I don't know, you know, you could say, like, if you look at something like, if you look at an animation, like, My Hero Academy, right, where 97% of the world's population are born with superpowers, right, and only a select few have the potential and ability to actually become a superhero, and out of that very few pop, um, that very few selection of people that can make it as a superhero, there's maybe only three percent that can be at the very, very top, right? So you could have like a bunch of people that wield the force, but all, all they could do is move like a coke can, you know, or whatever. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So I yeah, that was that's just my. It's almost a rant more than a review. Right, of Star Wars, you know, The Last Jedi, and yeah, I just want to know what you guys think of Star Wars, what's your opinions of it, um, did it do a lot for you, 
were you inspired by it? Did it make you happy? Did you like it? Were you satisfied? What did you think of Luke's role in the movie? What did you think that they did with um, Leia's character? Um, Ray, what did she do? Because I missed it. So I would be very, very happy if you guys could tell me what Leia did. Because I missed it. I didn't understand. No, sorry. Ray. I didn't understand what Ray did. I didn't understand her role. I didn't understand her purpose. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. For the simple reason I don't understand it, it's literally because of the first movie. The first movie put her on one track and then this movie put her on a different track, but then she was sidetracked for the whole movie on a planet. Watching Luke mope around, sleep around, drink some alien cow's testicle milk right and just do shit i just confused i was confused so if you guys can help me you know let me know because it has been a couple days since i've watched it so maybe i've forgotten some important factors uh, and I haven't looked on the internet. I've not been reading any. I've not redone any research about the movie to jog my memory. So uh, to be honest with you, until two hours ago, I wasn't actually even going to do this video. It's just I thought to myself, you know what? I do have to put my opinion out there on Star Wars, you know, because I do like Star Wars. I am into Star Wars, and um, yeah. It'd be a cool thing to do, you know, coming up to Christmas, and it's a massive movie. It's a massive movie. Star Wars is a one of the building blocks of cinema. You know, it's um, it's one of the biggest movies franchises there can be ever. That movie's gonna do a billion, easy, easy gonna do a billion by the end of this year. You know, so yeah. I want to hear what you guys got to say, so I'm going to pass it over to you. So once again, thank you very much for, if you've watched all the way through, this is almost my, this is my, probably my longest, longest video, right, which shows the Star Wars is significance. And, um, yeah, look, look at this stuff, man. I mean, you got, this is just, this is just lying around. You know, so I say that I'm not really into Star Wars. And then I've got all this kind of like crazy stuff. You know, yeah, I do like Star Wars. I do like Star Wars. I am into Star Wars in a big way. Look, see, I've even got like these kind of mad glasses, mad Star Wars glasses and stuff like that. You know, so I am kind of big into Star Wars and yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I can't really say anything stupid. You know, but because Star Wars is done, there's nothing we can do. We can't turn back time. We can't ask them to redo stuff. It's done. There's no director's cut or edit that can change or manipulate what has happened. It's done until the next movie. Luke is gone. You know what I mean? So... It shouldn't bother me because that's what it is. It's the movie. Move on, accept it. But a part of me, I cannot accept that Luke is dead. I can't accept it. I can't accept it. It's it's too much for me. It's it's too much of a piss take. The fact that Luke is dead, and I don't feel like he went off. He didn't. He didn't go. Up, he didn't go up properly. Although I do understand the significance of what he did, projecting himself over the galaxy, that killed him? Okay, so, yeah, whatever. Warriors, I pass it on to you. And, yeah, we'll just go from there. So, I want to say, once again, I said my last video, Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year, um, stay blessed, keep focused, uh, be happy, and, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing because it's the best thing because it's what you've chose to do. Art right, Warriors, take care. Later.